They claim to have engaged with the London Metropolitan Police and with British Transport Police, and it appears that they may have passed images to them. The suspicion or that the likelihood is that they also identified people of interest to them. So maybe they identified uh, homeless people or other people that they didn't want in the area to be stopped or to be engaged with them, moved on. And that's really a huge problem in terms of people's ability or right to live in a city to pass through it. British Transport Police said they were using the technology to counter antisocial behaviour. So that was essentially undesirable behaviour in a space where they want people to spend money. Using facial recognition for activities that aren't necessarily criminal in the first place is hugely problematic. But again, we know little about this, so there's a lack of, lack of accountability, lack of transparency. The idea that a private company is taking it on themselves, the obligation, I guess, or the authority to um, to protect the public against crime is problematic. There should be a process by which people are brought within the realm of the, the criminal justice system. You know, there should be a process by which people are engaged by the police and that should be regulated. The idea that a private company can do it is inherently problematic because what is their authority? What is their process? The police are subject to the Human Rights Act to regulation by the Surveillance Camera Commissioner but the same doesn't apply with respect to private companies. So we really have no effective regulation dealing with private companies' use of facial recognition. Even if it's a privately owned space, people's rights still apply. Because it was not advertised what this scheme was, there was no way people can meaningfully consent uh, to the face recognition system as they pass through that space. And consent is a fundamental part of the way in which OpenStreet over surveillance works in this country.